Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I'm here at a Rivian Adventure Network charging site. Uh, you'll notice that my Chevrolet Bolt EV is not plugged in and charging even though these are CCS chargers. Um, so on paper they're compatible. Well, I would also normally be doing a site review of a new site like this from a new provider, but well, they haven't earned that right yet because again, my Bolt EV is not plugged in and charging here. And my site reviews are pretty much reserved for public access sites. That's why I've never even touched a Tesla site because they're a private proprietary site. Now, Rivian decided to do the same thing, though unlike Tesla using their own standard, Rivian just adopted the common standard now in North America of the CCS1. Now these chargers are 500 amps up to a, a thousand volts. So maybe suggesting that in the future Rivian will be offering higher voltages, pa voltage packs, but then they're also just maximizing that 500 amp um, capacity that's available in the CCS standard. I don't know though, it looks like their, their cables are just rebadged or reshrouded um, Huber Plus Sooner cables, the 500 amp cables. I've heard some mixed reviews about the thermistors and various cables. If they're using the second generation cables, maybe customized for Rivian, they're not going to run into the same thermal management issues that we've seen from some of the Electrify America stations using the first generation Huber Plus Sooner cables. Uh, but either way, it, it you know, it, it's, it's, this is as good as you're going to be able to ask for really from any charging provider at this point. Just looking at the layout, right, they, they, it's mostly nose in or back in parking. In the case of the Rivian, right, their, their charge point is in the front, so it's nose in parking. They provided one of what I think they intend to be full pull through parking over there. Uh, it looks like, well, maybe someone decided they aren't gonna park there this time, but someone was parked there before. So if you do have a trailer, only one of these spots is going to support you in terms of uh, pulling your uh, Rivian through uh, with the trailer behind you and plugging in. The rest of these, uh, you're gonna have to detach. You're gonna have to, pull in uh, just like a regular truck and have your trailer somewhere else. Uh, so it is still a little bit limiting. I, I don't know what the right percentage or if you just really do need only one pull through parking option, uh, but I, I can see that as being a big limitation for this, especially for this route uh, where you're going up into the mountains. A lot of people are taking trailers, camping, things like that. Uh, this is mostly a business park, it seems like. Uh, Bank of America, Verizon, things like that, but there are in addition to the retailers, there is a El Pollo Loco. There are places to eat. I mean, overall, it's, it, it is a nice site and it's a good effort, but I did want to talk about one thing, and this came up a lot at uh, a Fully Charged Live, is people were asking me how long they think, or how long do I think Rivian can sustain a private network? And I give it a year tops. So I think part of it, maybe they're concerned with compatibility with other automakers. If they are, I think they should do a beta program, have some people sign up. Uh, they'd probably only open it to Rivian reservation holders or Rivian owners who own other EVs, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I think they should try to get a broad spectrum audience. Uh, who are going to be willing to use some of their chargers on longer road trips just to test and validate. Um, and then, because what's gonna happen with Rivian is they have two choices. These sites, if they're only serving the Rivian population, are going to get hit with massive demand fees. And we're talking about on the order of 10, 15, $20,000 a site pretty easily if you have one or two Rivians coming in, charging, pulling a 400, 500 kilowatt, a megawatt from the site for maybe 30 minutes, an hour out of every week, out of every month, you're never going to deliver enough power to offset what you're gonna pay in demand charges. So they're gonna either have to install expensive batteries, tie them so that they can offset those demand charges, or they're going to need to open up the network to as many people as they can who are going to 
continuously use the site, right? And draw enough power that they can actually sell this power. Um, I don't want to say at a profit, but not at a loss, right? So you're not, they're not spending uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars a kilowatt hour uh, and only selling it for 25 cents or I guess maybe for Rivian owners for free. So yeah, they're, they're gonna have to do something because I don't think that this model is sustainable as it is. Maybe initially they have enough funds to burn through, um, but I, I would give it about a year and really with the federal funding coming online, they don't want to be a private network. They really don't want to follow Tesla down that in my opinion, very stupid path, basically. So yeah, these definitely, I think, need to be um, opened uh, to the public, even if it's in a sort of limited uh, beta set sense, just to, to make sure there's compatibility, no issues. And then Rivian can really start to look at this as being another revenue stream because they already have a sort of sunk cost with this because they owe it to their owners to put them in and that's sort of baked into the cost of their rather expensive trucks and so um, they're not going to be able to use this as a competitive advantage though not with gm funding hundreds of 350 kilowatt ev go sites not with electrify america continuing to build out and not with what i've seen from some of the other charging providers and what they're planning to do uh, to build out infrastructure uh, public charging is no longer a competitive advantage a competitive sales advantage that tesla was able to leverage for a few years but even they're sort of not able to do that anymore so i don't think that rivian has really any business case for keeping these closed so it's really only uh, software compatibility and access issues and things like that and here i am right in, th this is a great time to be traveling great time to be up here and there's not a single Rivian here charging. So uh, yeah, they could double, triple, quadruple their sales um, and it wouldn't hurt anybody to have these chargers open and available, even if only 50% of them were open and available to non-Rivian owners, um, it, it would be more than enough. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, do you think Rivian should be maintaining a private network? Do you think it even makes business sense for them to attempt to? Um, if you're a Rivian owner, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, what do you think about the idea of having a private exclusive network that only you can use, uh, but it's gonna be you know, untenable in terms of financing and maintaining costs and basically keeping Rivian in business and keeping them building, uh, building trucks and vans and things. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out. And uh, I've got to get back to my pedestrian 150 kilowatt charger uh, over by Vaughn's.